There have been a lot of people begging me to make a video about how to do IP pass-through with AT&T's BGW320, so here is that video. But there are a couple things that I want to mention first before we just get started on how to do that. The first most important thing is that your router or the device that you want to use in place of your BGW320 must be configured in DHCP mode. Now that's not something I can cover because every device does things differently, but you should know that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your router is configured to be in DHCP mode. That is listening for an IP address or waiting to be assigned an IP address by another router or whatever piece of equipment your ISP has given you, in this case, the BGW320. The next serious thing to note here is that this isn't gonna be a video going into the finite details of how to configure your network. Once you have done IP pass-through, we're simply doing this for demonstrative purposes because if I tried to give you a detailed network outline, we would be here all day. And the third and final thing is, is that if you plan on using a router that also has access point or wireless capabilities, you're going to want to disable the Wi-Fi on the BGW320 so that your router with wireless access point capability does not compete for airtime with the BGW320. And by the way, if you don't plan on having a wireless device and you just want to use a plain old router, that's fine because the BGW320 actually has pretty good Wi-Fi, as far as I can tell anyway, in this house. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and actually get started. First things first, to make things easier for us in the long run, let's go ahead and disconnect all devices that are plugged into the RJ45 ports on the rear of the AT&T BGW320, and let's go ahead and disconnect any mobile devices or any devices that are using the BGW320's Wi-Fi. Now that you've done this, let's go ahead and locate the MAC address on the router that you have. You can usually find this on the bottom or rear of the device, and sometimes in the box or on the box somewhere. You're going to need this MAC address later, so that way we can easily identify it within the BGW320's software. Awesome. The next thing we're going to want to do is locate the device access code that's unique to your BGW320. You're, you can find this either on the bottom of the gateway itself or on the rear side of the gateway near the Ethernet ports. And while you're back there looking for the device access code, go ahead and make a mental note of the IP address of the gateway itself. You can find this on a sticker somewhere on the device, and it should be 192.168.1.254 by default. You're gonna to wanna to remember that because we will be using it later. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and connect the router that you want to use to the gateway and a desktop or laptop directly to the gateway. If your laptop can't connect directly to the gateway, that's okay, you can still use the gateway's Wi-Fi to do these next steps, like I'm gonna show you here in a moment. Sweet, now that we only have two devices connected to your gateway, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is open your favorite browser, whether it be Firefox, Chrome, Edge, Safari, Brave, or whatever it may be, and in there, go to the address bar or URL bar and type in that IP address I asked you to find earlier. That is 192.168.1.254. After entering this in, you should be presented with a page that looks like this. The next thing we're gonna do is click on device list. And in here, we're gonna to wanna to click the clear and rescan for devices button. And what this is gonna do is force the AT&T gateway to forget about all the devices that were plugged into it or connected to it previously. Now that we've done this, and if it doesn't auto populate immediately, that's fine, just know that's okay. Now from here, we're gonna to wanna to click on firewall. And then we're gonna to wanna to click on IP pass-through just below firewall. And then we're gonna enter in that device access code that can be found on the back or bottom of your gateway. Click on continue. And then we'll be presented with the IP pass-through page. For allocation mode, you're gonna to wanna to set pass-through. You can skip default server internal address. And then we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the pass-through mode is set to DHCPS fixed. Next, under pass-through fixed MAC address, the device list drop down menu, you're going to want to select the option that shows the MAC address that I asked you to find earlier on the bottom of your device, the back of the device, or on the box of your device. And then you can select that and it should auto populate for you. If for whatever reason this drop down menu is empty, and trust me, it will be, you can always manually enter in your MAC address like I have here on the right side and it should look something similar to what you see here, that being 
colon ac colon bravo nine colon delta nine colon zero zero colon seven six of course enter in your mac address not mine the next thing you want to do is just skip over pass through dhcp lease time because honestly it doesn't matter and then click on save now once you've made this change it could take up to two minutes for it to actually activate if it doesn't activate after two minutes you can restart the device by either unplugging it and plugging it back in or you can simply go up here on the top left corner click on device and then on the far right on the second row here you'll see restart device click the restart button and the device will restart and that's how you configure ip pass through on the at&t gateway if you plan on using your own Wi-Fi, now would be a good time to disable the Wi-Fi on your device. Now, I'd go through this video, but I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is, but just know that you can find it here uh, within this same portal, if you will, or page. The last thing I wanna cover for this video is why would you even wanna do IP pass-through in the first place? Well, IP pass-through allows you to avoid an issue called double NAT. And essentially what happens is that you can have a run to a situation where if you have the BGW320 setup and your own router setup, you'll have two NATs running. And what that will cause is some connection issues for you and increase your latency in most respects anyway. And so by doing IP pass through, you can avoid having dual NATs. And you'll see this message pop up like on your Xbox or PlayStation or PC while gaming. And you'll see the message that says, warning, uh, NAT type too strict or NAT settings too high. And with double NAT or a situation where you're too strict or your settings are too high, you'll have an increase in latency, which is not good obviously for gaming, but for most situations, uh, aside from gaming, you really probably wouldn't notice any real issues. But nonetheless, it's important to at least uh, do IP pass through so you can avoid double NAT because that's less ports you need to forward and other modifications you need to make on both devices. You only need to do those modifications on one device now, which makes everything a lot easier. The other thing is that I wanna mention that this is not bridge mode. Bridge mode is not the same thing as IP pass-through. And with the BGW320, as far as I can tell, you cannot do bridged mode. So take that information and do with it what you will. And I think that pretty much concludes this video. So I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching and I will see you all next time. Peace.